this camera as one big huge issue and welcome back guys today we're testing the Fujifilm XS20 uh, I've been uh, wanting to try this camera for a long time and I finally have it thanks to RCE Photo the biggest used market used photographic market in Italy also expanding in Europe links in the description below and I'm starting this review by vlogging with this camera with the vlog mod um, I only fiddle with it for a few minutes to try to understand how it works I thought it was more limiting but honestly you can do whatever you want so it's a it's a nice setting of course you're seeing the footage before I do so uh, we'll see later we'll analyze later how this looks let's move on and keep walking I'm on Mount Etna we're trying to reach uh, 2,500 meters at least uh, so we're starting at 1,800 so it's a 700 meters elevation gain it should be an easy one but as you can see I'm a little bit out of shape One thing I forgot to mention is right now I'm using of course face the de detection and continuous focusing I'm vlogging with the Tamron 11 to 20 so a non-stabilized lens uh, and I'm using IBIS plus digital image st stabilization if you're asking me why the reason is simple that's how I would shoot it anyways so if I'm testing it for myself I'm testing the way I would use it that's the way I would and you let me know how do you think the stabilization is doing um, there's one thing about this camera that uh, the rolling shutter is not as good as the X-H2S of course the sensor is not as fast but it should be significantly better than the 40 megapixel sensor on the X-T5 or X-H2 uh, you should not see that much of a jitter around the corner right now i'm at 11 millimeters and f10 that's why everything is in focus one thing that it's really uh, like as soon as you use it you will see it's how light it is compared to the xh2 or the xh2s and this is a big 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 selling point for a camera like this because it's got very similar functions but in a much smaller and lighter package and yet in this case they managed to put the new battery in it the one thing that I forgot to mention also is that yes it's using the previous generation sensor but it's using the newer generation processor and this is giving the camera the possibility to have a whole lot of new functions and improvements compared to the previous model so think about that you got a great sensor and the latest processor for a camera in this price range thousand two hundred dollar I guess you cannot ask much more than that And now I'm shooting in background the focus mode which basically opens up your aperture to its maximum and adjusts all the rest accordingly my shutter speed right now is at 2000 of a second because I don't have a uh, ND filter with me but I'm interested in seeing if it loses me because right now being an f2.8 as far as I can tell it looks like it's doing great going back to the hike the hike takes approximately well between an hour and a half and two hours depending on how fast you are with me vlogging it's gonna take at least two hours because 
uh, taking breaks and taking pictures and taking uh, footages and so we're not gonna be super fast and we're not fast already to begin with you can go up Mount Etna either with the um, gondola of course hiking or no it's not the bus it's just the truck you see it in the background they're bringing water up up to uh, the gondola uh, station as I was saying is through this road you can also go up with uh, four-wheel drives buses that are really good to look at I would love to make one of those as a camper van but it's not gonna happen And we have arrived at our destination and now it's time to have lunch and what better occasion than showing my lunch to test the um, product priority mode. Right now I'm in uh, uh, background the focus and if I show you my sandwich over here the, uh, the focus is still on my face because I have face detection se selected so unless I do this and then the focus snaps on my sandwich if I put a sandwich around here, you won't see anything changing. Now we are in focus priority mode and as soon as I put something in the foreground, it follows it despite my face being in the background. And so that's it for the vlog for today. I'll see you in the studio. Bye. And we're back in studio talking about the XS20, which uh, is the successor to the XS10, a camera that I loved a lot when I reviewed that video over here, or here, I guess here, uh, almost a year ago. Still, thanks to RCA Photo, which I wanna thank again for giving me the opportunity of testing this camera. But without any further ado, let's go start uh, with this review and uh, and we start from the build quality of this camera From a build quality perspective, this camera is very similar to what the XS10 uh, gave us. It's built very well. Of course, it's not as premium as the um, flagship cameras, but I mean, it costs almost a thousand dollars less 
it should be expected. And despite that, it's built really well and there's nothing to complain about. The um, lack of weather sealing, because this camera is not weather sealed, to me is not a big deal. Actually, it's not a deal at all. It's not a big deal at all because um, for a mid-range camera, this is pretty common and I believe weather sealing is one of those things that it's super overrated when it comes to normal people's camera, when it comes to uh, everyday use camera. Cameras that people would put in their bag if it's pouring rain like crazy. Professional stuff, it's a different story, but for the everyday user, this is not a big deal. The camera weighs, is very compact and very lightweight, and despite maintaining the compactness of the XS10, they managed to squeeze the new NPW 235 battery in here and this is a basically a game changer for this camera because uh, the battery life was one of those things that with the XS10 wasn't that great this camera lasts forever it lasts forever you put the energy consumption mode in normal and it lasts forever I tried to run the battery down <laughs> there was no way of doing that it is incredibly 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 uh, long when it comes to usage better than the XH2S better than the XH2 and all, and all that really really impressive performance it's got the uh, flippy screen that we came to know you flip it like that it goes one way or another you can protect your screen like that or leave it Oops, wrong side, like this. And of course, the camera faces with the screen like this. This is one of the selling points of this camera, together with the IBIS, which was improved, and uh, together with, again, its compact and lightweight uh, set setup. The dials and uh, all the touch buttons and all that are, feel, are built very well. The only thing is the um, joystick over here is very small. I would have loved to have a better like a bigger one but i understand the camera is compact you gotta pay the price somewhere the electronic viewfinder is from a spec standpoint is 2.39 million dots it's not incredibly uh resolution it's not, it doesn't have an incredibly high resolution but it does what it's supposed to do it works good it's not uh, like a tunnel to look at, although, of course, it cannot be compared to, to that of the X-H2 or the X-H2S. Of course, it would be stupid, but no, not even the one on the X-T5. Again, Fuji has to uh, find a way to separate the cameras, and the viewfinder is one of those things. But on the flip side, the LCD screen that you see over here, it is 1.8 million dots. It's a really, really good one. It, can be seen in pretty much any lighting condition and it's super easy to use. So the viewfinder is decent but not incredibly good. The back LCD is really, really good. It's also an improvement over the XS10 because it gives you the microphone and the headphone jack. The microphone also can be used as a remote controller if you need. And it's got the micro HDMI, which is fine. I mean, the camera is super compact and this small part over here they had to cram uh, the micro HDMI and the USB-C port. It's a very well-built camera and it's got the pop-up flash that you see over here, which you may or may not use it, but it may come in handy at times. The only thing that I don't like about the build quality of this, uh, of, about the build, not the quality, but the build of this camera is these uh, uh, neck strap, uh, rings over here listen to this they rattle around and I hate it it's my problem <laughs> it's a personal issue but I don't like it I much prefer the X-H2 and X-H2S uh, design which everything is standing still and it's easy to use and doesn't rattle at all other than that it's a very well built camera one thing I forgot is that the camera only has one uh, SD card slot U UHS-2 which is not a big deal. I understand having the um, peace of mind having two um, SD card can be good, but at the same time, cameras in this price range don't have dual dual um, 
do a memory card and if you have to save some money this is where it makes some it makes sense to save from an image quality standpoint uh, this camera sports the same sensor that was uh, released with the Fuji X-T3 so we're talking about a five years old sensor now this may sound bad but it's actually not bad at all that sensor was incredibly good in 2018 and it's still incredibly good in 2023 there's not many sensor around APS-C sensor around that do better than, than this also from a positioning standpoint using this sensor with the new processor makes a lot of sense because uh, it separates this camera from the top of the line and also uh, makes this camera more usable because normal people don't need the 40 megapixel and normal people definitely don't need the stack sensor which would have driven the, 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 the cost really, really high. So to me, this is a very good combination and um, I don't have anything to complain about. Actually, you can take great pictures with this camera like this. or thanks to its size and uh, compactness you can go shooting uh, street photography like this Let me point out that part of the quality of the street photography shooting was due to the 18 1.4 which is recording me uh, because that lens makes any camera become incredibly good so give credit where credit is due <laughs> those photos were in big part uh, thanks to the 18 1.4 but then again uh, they were taken with this camera from an analysis standpoint, I have a video talking about the image quality of this sensor compared to the others uh, from Fujifilm here. And so go check that if you want to go in a deep analysis. But in general, it starts 160 ISO and it's perfectly usable up until uh, 1600 ISO. At 32, uh, 3200 ISO, it is still really good and I have no problem using it. When you get to 6400, that's where in, you partially have to be uh, very good at exposing your picture because if you tend to underexpose and then bring the shadows up, that's where the camera starts to fall apart. When you start going uh, to 12,800 ISO, I can I have personally used it for black and white without any issue, uh, but it, it's not definitely it, it's not where you want to shoot with this camera. But to me, I shoot easily up to six thousand four hundred, making sure that I expose uh, for the shadows and not for the highlights, just to preserve the noise coming out of the shadows. The high, the dynamic range is high, uh, the raw is easy to edit, uh, it recovers easily four stops from the shadows and one stop from the highlights and in general this, this sensor makes a lot of sense for this camera and it's still really really good so don't let yourself be fooled by the fact that it's a, four, it's a five years old sensor. Talking about the focus, this camera sports the old sensor, you're right, but it sports the new processor that it keeps XH2, XH2S, 65, blah, 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 blah. What that means, it means a great improvement in the autofocus session. You have the new um, artificial, artificial intelligence driven modes where you're tracking cars, uh, animals, birds, uh, trains, airplanes, whatever you want. It's got the new face detection. It's got a lot of good stuff that make this camera 
really, really, really good. In my opinion, despite having this camera on the uh, latest firmware as of today, what I found is that the autofocus of the XH20 sits a little bit behind that of the XH2 and the DX2, XH2S. I don't know if I, I mean, I didn't run any specific tests, any scientific tests, so I don't know if it's me being uh, fooled by a specific scene where it was going a little bit um, crazy, especially with a lot of faces, although this is this happens also with other cameras, but my impression was that it wasn't at the same level of those two cameras. That being said, is miles ahead of that of the XS10, just to uh, make a comparison, or the X-T4. So, although it's not at that level, it is really, really good, and it's this itself is a good reason to upgrade if you have an XS10, but we're going to talk about video, that is another area, but that's, let's wait a moment. Video, as you've seen in the vlog, is a key feature, the selling feature of this camera uh, together with its compactness. Now, when it comes to video, the XS10 was already a very good uh, hybrid video camera. However, this camera, the XS20, basically improves all the areas where the XS10 was uh, somehow lacking. And what I mean by that? I mean that we finally have no recording limits. The XS10 was used to record uh, up to 29 minutes and then you had to uh, stop and start again. Uh, you finally have 4K60, although it's cropped, but it's fine. At least you have it. You have uh, 422 10-bit uh, in uh, H.265, while the XSN was limited to 420 8-bit H.264, and that to me personally is really important because it allows me to use a camera like that. Basically, it is interchangeable with the top-of-the-line cameras when you're recording video. So, if you're using that as a second camera, you have similar colors, similar resolution, similar uh, capabilities in general. So, that's really important. The battery lasts forever, as I already mentioned. The autofocus is vastly improved and it tracks you really, really good. And on top of that, Fuji uh, allows also to have the OpenGate 6.2K, which for many people is a key feature. One thing that I love is the red frame across the uh, the image when you're recording. Fuji, can you give me that in the X-H2 and X-H2S? That is, that should be like, I mean, it's so good. Give me that, please. And as you've already seen in the, in the vlogging uh, at the beginning of the video, this camera introduces the vlog mode, introduces the product priority mode and introduces the background defocus mode. These two modes are connected to the vlog, you cannot select those outside of the vlog mode. Fuji fixed that, give me the possibility even outside of that. I thought the vlog mode was going to be uh, better limited, but it's not true actually. You can do whatever you want with the vlog mode when it comes to settings, so really good. And in general, this camera does a lot and it's really, really, really good when it comes to video. One thing that is worth mentioning is that this camera, while recording in studio for a long period of time, like an hour or so, uh, it, would, it gave me the yellow uh, overheating warning. So it was just a warning. It never uh, turned off because of overheating, but it was overheating despite I had the screen uh, facing towards me. So the back was, um, was open. The one thing that you can do in this case, if you're really concerned about that, you can uh, buy the fan that you can then uh, connect over here. I personally don't consider that a big issue because after an hour and a, an hour and a half of recording in a room temperature, yeah, I'm still in Sicily and it's still warm enough here. I, that is not a big deal in the field. It gave me the overheating warning also while I was shooting street, but in that specific case, I was holding the camera like this because I forgot my um, wrist strap and so even when I wasn't using it the camera was uh, I was heating the battery uh, section with my hand and the screen in that case was closed so I was uh, putting the camera in a condition where it could overheat it was more than 30 degrees Celsius outside so it wasn't cold at all again it never shut me shut down on me and I could shoot for the entire day without any issue 
without eating any battery again. That battery is, oh man. The two things that I would like to get fixed is, again, the product priority, uh, not much the uh, background, the focus, but the product priority to be able to be used outside of the vlog mode. I would also love to see uh, the possibility to select the auto subject detection outside of the auto mode. And the one thing that it's really missing is the touch uh, to track focus, which was added to the GFX uh, 100S Mark II. And I believe it can trickle down to the other cameras just because the processor is the same. So there's, I don't see a reason why Fuji shouldn't do it. So those things I would love to be, I would love to be fixed via firmware. Other than that, the camera is really, really, really good. So in conclusion, is this camera worth the price of $1,300, I guess, $1,299? Basically $300 more than the XS10 when it was launched Two years ago? Yes, two years ago. In my opinion, yes, for two reasons. One, it has to do with the fact that prices have gone up for everything. Uh, there's many reasons, people that believe there's a reason for that, people that don't. Anyways, that's what's going on right now and we have to live with it, even if we don't accept it. Two, the feature, the features that this camera, all the improvement this camera brings over the XS10 are so important that those $300 are well worth the, the difference in price. Yes, the viewfinder is not spectacular. Uh, yes, uh, sometimes it may overheat on you, but it's not a big deal. Yes, it's not weather sealed, but the camera is freaking really, really good. And I love the XS10, but to me, I would also say that if you're owning an XS10 and you felt the limitations that that camera that I mentioned in this video that the camera gave you, I would strongly recommend you to upgrade to the XS20 if you like the body design and all, and all of that because the camera is that good. It is really that good. It's a very well-rounded camera. It can do everything. It can do uh, photos greatly. It can do videos greatly. It's feature-packed, future-proofed. Future it is friendly and easy to use compact, lightweight, it goes in any bag. So this camera in a vacuum is borderline perfect. However, this camera has one big, huge issue. What is that? That big, huge issue is the presence of the Sony A7, A6700. Now, while I don't consider the Canon R7 a true competitor because there's no lenses specific for APS-C in the Canon world just yet, but the camera itself is really, really good. I just haven't tried it, so I can't really speak about it. The Sony A7600 A7600, uh, is a, just costs $100 more, has a vast uh, lenses catalog also for APS-C, also from third party, and it's, especially when it comes to it, the hybridness, it seems to be a lot better where it matters. Meaning it gives you the 4K 120, the autofocus is probably much better. Again, I haven't tried it, so I can't really trust what I, uh, what I hear until I try it. So let's hold that thought for another moment maybe and for a thousand for a hundred dollar more yes it's got a little bit of uh, uh, letdowns like the back screen is not as good as this uh, as, as that one uh, on the xs20 the viewfinder is kind of similar when it comes to resolution but for a hundred dollars more that camera is a huge uh, competitor when it comes to the fuji xs20 if you're a few Fuji users, I would not bother thinking about it too much. The XS20 is a great camera and it's worth every penny that you're going to spend on it. That's it for today. This video was, was probably too long, as usual for, for me. Ciao and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.